Hello and welcome to episode 11 of the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we're going to be talking about some WWE. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> first, I already know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Uh-huh. Did you watch All In? No. Oh, okay. Why? Oh, I heard things. It was very good. Yeah, I heard. I, I figured you watched it. I just didn't oh, yeah. really have. Oh, A, I don't have the Fight TV app or whatever. The free app that you can download on oh, your I, device. I figured you had to pay for it. No, I don't know. Pay for the content on it. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't pay. I didn't pay for all in. All right. See, that was, was that better? Yeah. I mean, you could have watched it illegally, technically. <laughs> I could have, which but... I do not condone. I had to put that in there. Okay. Disclaimer. Sure. Um, no, no, it was a really good show. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. A lot of interesting things going on. Oh yeah. So um, the march of the dicks. <laughs> <laughs> basically the undertaker's druids were penises uh-huh joey ryan making his return the most um, over dead guy on the planet yes but no i mean yeah maybe not more th- well yeah probably more than the undertaker at well this point. now yeah um but they, they gave everybody their chance to shine like pretty much all the matches they gave plenty of time to so there was no squash matches or things like that. Well, it was just really a show for the fans, mm-hmm. and that's ultimately what it was meant to be. Yeah, that was the whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. And it was also an fu to Dave Meltzer. Not really. Yeah, it was. Oh, well, I guess it was, no, one million percent was. I guess so. That's the whole reason he why gave he did him his it. dollar. Yeah. So, yeah. but at the same time, in the process of showing up him, they put on a good show that made people happy. Mm-hmm. So. Yes. Yeah, I think much. I think apparently uh, like the only the only match that really didn't that seemed rush was the main event because yeah, they, were they ran cutting, out of time. Cut, yeah. yeah. So. Which is, uh, I mean they with what they the time they had it went 12 minutes but I think they were a lot like originally gave like 28 minutes so they had to cut it a lot. Yeah, so it makes it makes sense. But, but what are you going to do? So again, enjoyable, good to see that it's something like that is able to happen mm-hmm. in the current landscape where there was one giant company, a bunch of little companies, but when they all come together? Yeah. Well, the the big thing to come out of this is the next time they're going to pick a bigger venue, and then they're going to pick a bigger venue. Well, I mean, that's what you would think, but who they're, knows if they're, they're even going to do it. Yeah, okay. Good you one. never know. The, but the next time it's going to actually be sponsored by... Well ring of honor or well they they were doing stuff for for them that no i know they were they used their production and stuff yeah i know they were helping but i'm just saying it's going to be a a A full-on event yeah well i mean they sold out the garden exactly that's what i mean though they're gonna but that's the garden is not a big venue eventually what they'll do is they'll they'll do a wrestlemania-esque thing or they'll find like a a stadium Mm mm-hmm like a like a football stadium and try to do that. I wouldn't be surprised. We'll see, because if you pick the right spot, I'm sure you could do it. Mm-hmm. So, and that's that's where they're really gonna start showing the WWE that they're not really to be messed with, and that there's a lot of. Because well, I, I think it would be good for them to go all over, like oh, they're Co- not... like they're taking their you know Cody taking the NWA title and showing up all over the place. Yeah. Well, I'm sure he's gonna do that anyway. Yeah, right? absolutely. Because we saw that title defended... Uh, At House of Hardcore, we did. Yeah, that was um, special. I think that was Nick Aldis defended against one of uh, Roman's relatives, I would assume. He oh, was yeah, from the right. Samoan family. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was definitely not as big of a match as uh, at all in, I'm assuming. No, not at all. But that Flip guy, was he at... Yes, he was. He was at okay. House of Hardcore. Like, mm-hmm. That name sounds familiar. Yeah. So, yes, he was. Yeah. But... All right, I guess we should talk about Raw. Yeah, we talked about the the real wrestling, and now we're going to talk about sports entertainment. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so we open the show no, with... No, 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 we open the show, shit. Let's just get right to it. What? All right, so, like you said, uh-huh. Braun and his boys come out. Yes. Mick Siggles. Yes. Braun is officially a heel. I like this pairing, though. It makes sense. Oh, yeah, no, it, absolutely. It legitimizes Dolph Ziggler to an extent. To an extent. Well, it, he was saying things that he couldn't back up, but now he can back them up. He's not True. doing any of the work, mm-hmm. but he can back them He's up. He's got his boys to do it. Yep. Um, but yes, no, Ron is definitely a heel now. Mm-hmm. I forget what he... What really was the uh, 
the point, but uh, he was uh, talking down about the audience, and I think that was really where it was yeah. hit home. But it was more of like he doesn't care what they think mm-hmm. or something like that. Still, my favorite part is when Braun goes, Big dog! He just calls him out. I was like, man, that's awkward. It just doesn't. It, eh, whatever. I don't know. Um, but yeah, he has his own pack now, which I thought mm-hmm. was a funny thing for him to say. Um, Even though, yeah, he was all about being alone and stuff like that. He was the monster. He didn't need any people with him. Yeah, yeah, that's true. He didn't need but anyone to win I the guess, tag team titles. I guess he uh, he does because he's got three he was, adversaries. I was going to say he was uh, putting over Roman some more because he can't handle him by himself. <laughs> so, all Although right, he so, really could yeah. when, you, when you really think about it. Mm-hmm. Whatever. So we'll, we'll get to the whole point. So they're in the ring. Shield music plays. They come down from the crowd. Mm-hmm. Then we see Baldy Baron come on, on the come stage. Come on, everybody, come First, out. First, all the heels come out. And then the faces come out, no. led by Finn Balor. I thought Finn Balor was the first one out, No, he was the, no, the second the second round. Oh, yeah. okay. Because Finn attacked first and started getting... But why were they attacking the shield? Because that's what bad guys do. Yeah, I guess. But, I mean, even the good guys were in there, too. Yeah. That was, it just didn't make sense. Like wh- When I was going to open, mm-hmm. I was going to say we opened with the most absurd overbooked right. thing. Yeah, I wasn't going to start right, a point-to-point right. point right. thing. Fair enough. I was going to criticize the segment because mm-hmm. this was just absolutely crazy. And I mean, eventually they got into separating them, but it just was basically a big brawl. Mm-hmm. That was it. Yep. Then they cut to commercial. They go into the back. Baron Corbin's like yelling at them as they're getting as the shield mm-hmm. is getting put into the back of a police van. Right. So the big thing here was that eventually later on in the night they come back. Uh, well, uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Throughout the yeah, night, we got it. We got to We got to preface this yes. because them coming back. Right. Because it they skips were, a lot of stuff. They were able to go in front of a judge and mm-hmm. everything. Which Corey Graves posted on Twitter and said uh, David Otunga talked to one of his judge friends <laughs> and he got somebody to call in a favor to do it. And I was like, you know what? That's that's good of Corey. That's, it's funny he's playing into it. Yeah. But you gotta because you gotta, that's what everybody was bashing about. It's Labor Day. Nobody. Yeah, I was gonna say there's not open. nobody. Well, also even dirt like this. If this happened in the middle of the day, mm-hmm. like on a random day, right. there's no way anyone's getting arraigned that quickly that's, anyway. yeah that's it yeah especially so, with our uh, justice system yeah so it, it's absolutely absurd mm-hmm. but you know i guess when you have a three-hour show oh yeah you don't have all that much time to to do it it's true um all right oh yeah, but yeah it was a complete mess uh i guess we'll we'll talk about the main event as well yeah yeah sure, um so not? uh shortly after this uh, Finn Balor goes to Baron Corbin. He says, "I want a rematch." Because obviously, that's what we want to see—another match between Baron and uh, yeah. and Finn. So Baron's like, "I don't really want to." No, he said, "I think he said I'm too busy with everything that's going on." So you're gonna face Braun now? No, no, he, oh, oh. he made the match. Oh yeah, yeah, I don't know when he made. Oh the yeah, match that was later Braun. on. Yeah, yeah he walked I, in I, again. Yeah, because I could have. Like I don't remember seeing that. I don't know. It was on the Hulu version. Yeah, no, I I believe it happened. Yeah. I don't remember seeing it. Yeah. That's why in the notes I wrote apparently at some point gotcha. Corbin switched Braun with himself. Yeah. Um, well, oh no, because Corbin was I guess complaining that against man versus man, and then Finn said you're a real man or something like that. Mm-hmm. It was just either way nonsense. Um, so they make that match for the main event because obviously Baron Corbin belongs in the main event. <laughs> To be fair, the main event on SmackDown was uh, not a main event you would have expected. It was our truth versus the, <laughs> the Miz, Miz, correct? Yes. Yeah, so I, I guess... mean, I was delighted. No, but, no, you know. it, it's it, it's entertaining. Oh, it's yeah. not a main event feud, no. that's for sure. I mean, we've seen Braun versus Finn multiple times already. Yeah, it's true. Um, so that match happens. Mm-hmm. Finn gets destroyed, mm-hmm. um, and then well, both the. Uh, Drew and Dolph were at ringside. Yes, as they well. were at ringside, but they didn't really get that involved. No, I think what uh, Finn there's a couple of times over the ropes on top of them yeah. There's, there's a like couple that. of times where Drew and, and Ziggler kind of like mm-hmm. got in the way, but right. not necessarily like caused any issues. But yeah, after the match, they start beating up Finn, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden, was it they played the Shield's music? No, the sirens are going oh, off. Was the Everybody's siren for Scott Steiner again? 
Um, <laughs> so Me, and this is bastard. another. This is another very funny part. Oh, they just give them the van <laughs> to drive back. It's like, oh wait, wait, they're in SWAT gear. Maybe they're fucking... maybe they're undercover yeah. cops. <laughs> So Roman's driving the police van. Obviously. He's <laughs> backing up. <laughs> and then Dean and Seth pop out of the van. The three of them walk to the the, the stage. Mm-hmm. They're standing there ready for a fight. And then the entire <laughs> heel roster. <laughs> it was just including, in the 205. I was going to say, including the 205 live heels, yes. too. Because I'm like, is that Drew Gulak? Yep. It was, I noticed Drew Gulak and Tony Nese. I yep. don't know if there was anybody else. There might have been. Yeah. I don't know. There was a lot of people mm-hmm. out there. So that was fantastic. It was something. It was it was so dumb. It didn't make any sense whatsoever. <laughs> so this is two weeks in a row where the Shield get the crap kicked out of them. So that means that there's next week they're going to be on top and Roman's definitely defending or retaining the title. And it's going to have something to do with Dean and Seth and um, Big Ziggles. All right. So on to Mick Ziggles. They... Talked to Corbin earlier in the evening mm-hmm. and wanted a tag team title match. However, because Seth was occupied. Yes, yes, right, right. Which now the IC title has gone into outer space. I guess so. It, it certainly. Being I mean, great, we're probably going to end up getting him. Oh no, I, I don't know. We'll we'll talk. About I that want in a, a second. I want a tag team match where whoever gets whoever gets the pin wins, wins the IC title. title. Yeah. Dean gets the title. And then that's when Dean and Seth, Seth. start feuding. Mm-hmm. Or just have McIntyre pin All right. whoever. That All would right. make so, sense. So hold on. So the Revival obviously have a t- get a title shot because they beat the B team last week. Mm-hmm. And well, Was that match announced last yes, week? Yes, it was, yeah. Do you think there's any possibility they thought they were going to not have that match happen? Probably. Because I don't believe it. It would make yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. It, is very believable that they thought, you know, it might not have been announced, but the commentators well, you said probably, it. I, it. Somebody on commentary, I okay. think, said it. So um, it, it makes no sense to do it. But yeah, they basically but, said, Mick Siggles anyway, that if what happens if the revival don't make it down to the ring? Right. Well, then guess what? Baron says you guys will be placed in the match. That's not actually what he said. Well, what basically? Well, yeah, because he said that he would need to make other arrangements. So basically says, go ahead, beat him up. Right. Yes. So, so obviously the revival, they're getting interviewed, they get beat up. So then we get the tag title match of the B team versus Mick Ziggles. So I was so, a little hopeful. All right. Now, their whole story has been, you know, they've lucked into all their victories. Mm-hmm. They're beating, you know, having trouble with all these jobber teams, yet they're standing up to the best tag team basically on I the I was rough. hoping so badly that they, that they would just win. Yeah. And not even win... Like, after a hard, grueling match, just another stupid, dumb luck mm-hmm. win. That would have been great. I mean, the only... They couldn't do it, obviously, because it would completely take all right. the steam out of Mick Ziggles. Right. But they ended up winning the tag team titles, which mm-hmm. we all expected. Yep. But I, I just feel like it's always... We're, we have to sacrifice one storyline for another. To be fair, that storyline shouldn't have started to I, begin. I'm <laughs> just saying. But now, what are the B team doing? Nothing again. Eh, they'll still be around. I mean, I guarantee you they're still on Raw next week. Oh yeah, absolutely. even if they're not having a the rematch. Ascension was on Raw this week. They were, yeah. Um, so, but I wonder. I mean, are they going to go with the Shield having no titles and having to climb the ultimate mountain of getting the titles back from everybody? You know, from Braun and McSiggles. Like I, that's the only way I could see them putting the title on Braun. Now they have all three titles there. You know. This force on Raw and the Shield because the Shield has been complete underdogs in everything. Yeah, I was gonna say the only that would be the only thing is that they've been really booking. They, they've been a lot. There's been a lot of chasing for yeah, Roman, right? Not necessarily Seth, because Seth obviously mm-hmm. had the world title for a while, and he oh Roman's whole career has basically been chasing. So that would be the only reason to think that that would be the case. Oh yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah, it, it's, it's all about Roman, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, so it's definitely possible. I but, wouldn't be yeah. too surprised. Uh, well, I, or are we just going to get Dean and Seth versus them for the tag titles at Hell in a Cell? No, that, that, is... that's going to happen. Yeah. But... but I think that match is going to have the two teams interfere 
anyway. Because mm. the Universal title is actually going to be in the main event of pay-per-view. It always is. No, it's when it's defended. Yeah. How often does that happen? Not very often. I don't know. So. Whatever. Yeah. Oh, um, well, we know it's not going to be AJ and Joe. No. God, no. God, no. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> All right, so oh, so funny. It, I, I'm, I'm sure you've noticed this as well. It what? seems like they're putting more women's matches on the shows. There was three. I know, and I think there was at least two. Was there two on SmackDown? I thought there was only one. Maybe there was one, but there was a Naomi. handful of segments with yeah. the women involved. I was say, I think it was just Naomi against yes. Peyton Rice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right. Um, but yeah, so the return of the Bellas. Yep. Why is it that the Riot Squad looks like the veterans in the match? Because the Bellas aren't good wrestlers. Valid point. That's it. That's it. <laughs> but it like like clearly it, like it, it was just all right. Bad. They were around at a point in time. We brought this up before. Yes. Where Nikki was considered a good wrestler. I know, I know, I know. And the, basically, the, the, the Bellas was the turning point for the women's revolution. Yes. So, These well, were Divas wrestling matches. That was basically... Mm-hmm. So, while Nikki certainly was a good character, she wasn't the strongest of wrestler, so it, it's not a surprise. No, and, I, I and, know. And you got to remember that Ruby Riot's actually a pretty good wrestler. Yeah, but Sarah she wasn't Logan. in the match. But no, no, Logan's okay. decent. I was going to say, Logan and Liv's Wal- looked good. She, Liv, Liv has been around for a while. Oh, and yeah, she, was she was in just... the performance center with all of the people who true. we consider to be the good women's wrestlers. That's fair. So it's not like she hasn't had the the experience or the, you know, the, I guess the awareness of what's going on around right. her. Even if she's not necessarily Involved. the top. Yeah. It, but yeah, no, she's been around for mm-hmm. as far as I can remember. I was watching um, the photo shoot with Ric Flair and Charlotte Charlotte Flair. Mm-hmm. She was in pictures of when Charlotte Charlotte's and Becky's NXT. early. Yeah. So obviously she's yeah, been yeah, around. Right, right, right. She just never got the like attention. Mm-hmm. So. Um, what about the segment later on with... Uh, Nikki and Brie and Rhonda and Natalia in the locker room. Um, I think what if you they're need trying training help. You can come yeah, to me, <laughs> which is funny. Um, but I, I think if anything, they're just trying to divert the attention away from the, I guess the rumor that Nikki's going to be facing Rhonda well, at Evolution. Happen. It's going to happen. It makes no sense though. They haven't built it at all, and it doesn't make any sense because Nikki. I mean, I think it would make sense to have Natalia versus Ron. That's because fine, it seems that like makes that, sense. You, that you know she's getting sick and tired of all this stuff. Yeah, and, because Ronda can't lose, oh, but not. they don't like making Nikki look bad. So it's why would you make your most popular? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I because the the pre- I'm just talking about the content in the interaction oh no it they're bad just, uh, yeah, yeah it was yeah, just I, bad. acting's horrible because you got giggles mcgee who <laughs> just looks like she's too excited about being around to actually focus mm-hmm. not not putting anything it's not no, no it's not because yeah, she's yeah. new um, we're talking no. about ronda obviously um so she's you know she's overwhelmed and it's fine because she's when she's actually doing stuff, she's doing a good job at it. Yeah. She just looks like she's way too happy to be there. Not how, that it's not something to be excited about. You just kind of need to be able to hide it. Like, How is Alicia Fox's arm still attached to her body? How is she still alive? I don't know. They look so brutal when yeah. she gets ragdolled around by Rhonda. But I think that's the reason why they picked her. Because of how easily she's able to manhandle her. Yeah, I guess that's true. Because... Uh, we had a match with uh, Alexa Bliss versus Natalia, and somehow it ended up being Ronda Rousey beating up Ale- Alicia Fox. Yeah. Because it was after the match. Mm-hmm. I think Alexa attacked Natalia. No, she kept the <clears throat> the arm bar on. Oh, and, and that's when Ronda Ronda came got in. in the ring. She left the ring. Ronda was tending to her. That's when Alicia attacked Ronda. Yes. Ronda gets pissed, yes. throws Alicia it's around bad. like a rag doll. And uh, so, yeah. <clears throat> And, uh, you know, not yeah. a whole lot going on with that 
storyline. It's very no. It's very okay. We'd get it. Alexa's against Ronda. Mm -hmm. Ronda's the dominant force. Alexa's trying to be the the cunning heel, trying to get a one up oh, yeah. on uh, on Ronda. Oh yeah. Uh, funny thing that uh, starting to be the trend. I guess Elias has become the opening act for, for the women. Yeah, apparently. So he came out. He was trashing um, Columbus, Ohio, which is funnily enough where Alexa Bliss is from. Um, she comes out. They're all cheering for her, hometown. Blah mm. blah blah. She's pretending like she's like happy to be home, and then she, as she usually does, turns on the crowd. Yep. And then she actually kind of like sucks up to Elias, which was weird and uncomfortable. Because eh. Braun's right backstage. True. <laughs> Especially with the announcement of the Mixed Match Challenge yes. and everything. Yes. Whatever. Um, so Dana Brooke and Ember together as a tag team, huh? Um, this was a literally a okay, we want to do a storyline. I didn't I don't know what happened. They cut it from the Oh, they did. Okay. Case. So this was okay, we want to take Dana Brooke away from Titus Worldwide. Mm. We need to give her a reason to lose a match. But we only have faces left. <laughs> so I guess we'll team her with Ember and have them face Sasha and Bailey, which is 1 million percent fine mm -hmm. because this match didn't mean anything. And technically, wrestling's supposed to be people fighting for competition, right. not because they hate each other. It's true. So this is 1 million percent what wrestling's supposed to be like to begin with. Not the crazy sports entertainment that Vince has kind of programmed into our, uh, mm. well, our minds. So this was fine. I had no problem with this. I was confused because usually they don't do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. well, I was just because I was like, wait, why was she her partner? Because there was literally no one else. Yeah, it makes more sense. Um, so, <clears throat> but anyway, Sasha and Bailey win. Um, apparently the reasoning behind it was because I think Apollo and Titus uh, distracted Dana. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she got mad at the two of them. She's like, I'm done. And then she leaves without him. Okay. And, uh, so yeah, I guess they're trying to separate Dana from them. Why? Mm. Well, All right. So why is Drake Maverick the, uh, oh my manager God. for the authors? It of was Bane? so funny because they cut to them walking down the hallway and I'm like, he's so tiny yeah, with his vest and everything. Yep. So the three of them come out. And he goes, I'm still the general manager of 205 Live, but I'm also the manager of the Authors of Pain. So why? I don't know. Is the real question. This was cut from it, Hulu, obviously. It came so far to left field that there's... I, I th Obviously, the Authors of Pain need somebody. Right. And... But you already but, have somebody in a role on a completely different show. Uh -huh. He was brought in just for the cruiserweights. And you're telling me there's nobody else that could fit this role? There's plenty of people <clears> that could. <throat> Bobby Roode, for example. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That would kind of make sense. Give him something to do instead of teaming with Chad Gable. That's going to be a new thing. Yeah, that happened. And they're going to end up splitting and facing each other, probably. That's fine. I don't know. I, I, like, I like Chad Gable, so... If he's, he's on good. TV, it's we're better off, technically speaking. Um, let's see. Oh, well, first I'm gonna say the we'll talk about the the least important thing. Then we'll wrap up with the uh, big news ish kind of sure. thing that they think is big news. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, Corbin apparently had a meeting with Bobby Lashley, and. The other this day, this is cut from the Hulu version yeah. as well. The other day, I said this was very interesting, mm -hmm. but not because of what was going on, but because of how Bobby Roode was not Bobby Roode, Bobby Lashley was acting. Mm. He was acting like a person who was about to snap and kill everybody <laughs> because, like, he was speaking like someone who was very understanding of what was going on around right. him, mm -hmm. but he was saying it in a tone that was like, okay, get away from me. I'm going to strangle you. It was, it was pretty funny. And okay. it was everything he said. It wasn't like a couple of like mm -hmm. strange it lines. Every... It was like everything. So, and ultimately, this segment led to Kevin Owens coming back. Yes, after he quit. I think that was the whole thing. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, Kevin Owens quit for no reason. 
Um, that was a waste of time yeah. and whatever. Um, and we're going to get Bobby Lashley versus Kevin Owens probably on the pre-show of Hell in a Cell. Poor Kevin Owens. Yeah, Son of a bitch sucks. puts his body on he's the line. so good. Does everything. And so this good. is what he's... It's a shame. It's just... I mean, if you're going to have Seth do all this stuff with him, just give him the IC title. Would make sense. Yeah. They, yeah, they could have done it last week. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Uh, all right, so the main event, not the actual main event. We talked about the actual event. Yeah, this main was event. basically the whole reason the show took place. Yeah. So uh, they announced Shawn Michaels would be coming back. Yes. And then we heard rumors that The Undertaker would mm -hmm. also be making an appearance. Now, um, Michael Cole. Nobody in their right minds would have thought The Undertaker would have been here tonight. Yeah, no one listens to Michael Cole. No. So uh, Shawn Michaels comes out. He's talking. He shills the network because that was, that was pretty funny. <laughs> That was pretty funny because that was a real big dig yeah. at Vince. I'm assuming. I guess. Um, well, Remember because, when they would do it all the time. That's what I mean. That's why it's funny yeah. though, because they don't really do it no. as much as they used no, to. No, 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 no. So I had the banner on the announce yeah. table and all that shit. So, um, but he he says that uh, everyone keeps on picking the Undertaker, but I think the Undertaker has more. Ga uh, the yeah, Triple H has more gas in the tank. Because we heard from a bunch of legends that mm -hmm. they were picking the Undertaker. Yeah. Because so. This match already happened, and it was supposed to be end of an era. But it's true. here we are. Um, uh, I guess Austin and Shawn Michaels are the only ones who picked uh, Triple H, mm -hmm. which, whatever. Yeah. Undertaker comes out. Oh, sorry. The Undertaker comes out, and then he uh, basically kind of just stares at Shawn, right. and then he's like, I'm going to take out Triple H. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, then it kind of seemed like the two of them were setting each other up for, for a match. match. Yeah. Uh, so expect that at WrestleMania next year. Yeah, because basically Sean said the reason he retired was out of respect for the fans and the Undertaker, and then mm -hmm. the Undertaker was like, "It's because you're scared." Yep. So that's gonna happen. It's just a matter I'm of. I'm gonna beat your buddy, and I'm coming for you. Yep. And uh, yeah, that was raw. That was raw. Mm -hmm. They're really it's... pushing this super showdown for some reason. Yeah, I, well, I'm guessing the ticket sales probably aren't where they were hoping them to be. I would imagine so. Yeah. Because this is an enormous yeah, I venue, think, I think. I think they want to get 80000 but I think 70000 is probably what they're going to draw. I don't remember. I was reading something on it. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't really matter. It's true. It's, we it's going to go. be a glorified house show, basically. Oh, yeah. They know, I mean, but the that's, only that's thing, what the greatest Royal Rumble yeah, was. Yeah, I mean, the only thing really, the biggest stakes right now is the uh, Daniel Bryan versus The Miz for number one contendership. Yeah, there's no... Which is probably why they're not having a match at Hell in a Cell. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's, uh, it's because it's the tag match. That's mm -hmm. right. Um, and we're probably going to get The Shield versus the three of them. Yeah, I would assume so. Regardless of who mm -hmm. has what title. Well, I think really it's doesn't. also the Bellas and Ronda versus yeah. the mm -hmm. Riot Squad. So that won't be a title. I match think they either. announced Joe versus. A I think G that is for the title, but and I Cena think. with Bobby Lashley against Owens and Elias. That was officially announced, or that was or it's rumored. Right? I I saw a graphic. I don't know if it's. I don't know. It was probably rumored, and then yeah. the graphic was put together. That's true. Although I thought I thought the Cena and Owens match was announced. I don't know. I think it was announced probably on their social media, but yeah. nothing on TV. Not, yeah, not on TV. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, no. SmackDown was. I enjoyed it. It wasn't anything crazy. What we really got from it was that the bar is going to face Rusev Day. Um, the this is next a good, week, I'm guessing, right? Because next week's the go home show. To yeah, Ellen it has so. to be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my guess would be that they wanted, or because this is usually what they do, they get all of the setup mm -hmm. done like the week after the previous pay per view, and they kind of just coast. Yeah, and I guess they kind of just lucked into situations where coasting worked. Works, yeah, because everything here, with the exception of, yeah, okay, that's not exactly fair to say. Um, cause, uh, AJ and Joe mm -hmm. is relatively fresh. SummerSlam was their first match. Yeah. So. And that's this is going probably till. The end of the year. Or it's either going to end 
Um, well, after, we don't know what their plan is for Survivor Series. Yeah, yet. I was going to say. It's either going to end after Hell in a Cell or it's going to last until the run. Right. One or the other. Which is a big difference, which is pretty funny. Um, oh, so. What? I had heard a rumor. It was just, you know, away from Joe and AJ. But the whole Nakamura thing, since he hasn't been on the show in like two weeks, um, I guess there's rumors going around that they're waiting for Ray. Mysterio? Yeah. For Nakamura? Yeah. That was a rumor I had heard. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It doesn't, but... Because I think uh, All In, and he had like another two dates after, that was, was all he was committed to. And then oh. his plan was coming to oh. back. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know why they wouldn't just continue the... Well, I know why they would. No, they branched off and Andy and well, Jeff. I th- well, because that came out of nowhere, technically. Yeah, yeah. They didn't Randy need to do out. that. So I think, th- honestly, I think this whole thing happened because they wanted to get Jeff in a Hell in a Cell match. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they didn't want to have a Nakamura do it. Yep. You got to watch him stick his finger in Randy's ear like 20 times last night. As long as he's not sticking anything else in there. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, But, I mean... Yeah, I mean, we got a side-by-side interview with Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair, Mm -hmm. similar to kind of what they did with Joe and uh, Lesnar. I'll tell you what, though. It was good. Oh, yeah, it wasn't because the... I don't know. I I just don't know what WWE's endgame with this is here. I mean, you have two very solid characters that are both making good points Mm -hmm. with... I mean, is anybody really gaining anything when... WWE is booking Becky as a heel. They have been booking her as a heel on the house show circuit. She's been tagging with Carmella. Really? Yes, against Asuka and Charlotte. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, the boos for Charlotte are quite noticeable, and the cheers for Becky. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I just don't know what WWE's endgame with this is. Well, they, we... wanted, they wanted to give... Uh, Becky the motivation. All right. And they were hoping that because it was such a twist that people were going to be like, oh, screw her. Yeah. So they but... it, it's, it's another good example of the WWE's disconnect. I mean, I think they should have planted a, some like seeds of doubt in there, like her getting a victory that, you know, when she was working her way up to the title match, just like a uh, feet on the ropes or something like that, just so you kind of knew that Becky was going in this direction so the fans would get on board with booing her rather than um i'm gonna disagree and i'm gonna say they should have taken the reaction of becky standing on top of the ladder during the money in the bank mm-hmm. match where she almost had it oh yeah and everybody the crowd was, reaction absolutely she should have been the only person that should have won that yes. match. and that reaction alone mm-hmm. is good enough to prove that obviously she shouldn't be a heel or Give her the briefcase, have her act like Carmella, and actually make her heal. Yeah. Because now it's hard to believe because she didn't do anything. Yeah. There's no reason to boo her. No, I know. Except but, for the fact that they right. think that, oh, she's she's mad at Charlotte, mm-hmm. so she's obviously the bad guy. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. it's it doesn't make any yeah. sense. Um, this Joe and AJ story is just getting. Not a weird, like, I don't know, they're just it's not creepy. doing anything it's with it. Creepy. Well, no, because Joe came out and said that, you know, Wendy was at home and AJ was there and he was looking through the blinds waiting for Joe to come through the house. All of a sudden, AJ's at SmackDown. What was the point? Uh, and then they just brawled and then the zebras came out and that was it. Oh, and Paige came out too. It's just bad. I did, this storyline is so like I mean come on misguided. just at least show up at his house with a gun or something I mean <laughs> give us something here he's got a gun maybe just he's show up with gun. Wendy's that would that would work too <laughs> that would work yeah. it's like I keep on talking about Wendy's I just got the munchies mm-hmm. dude this is a Wendy's restaurant <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. all right now the real highlight of Smackdown was our truth as it should be mm-hmm. so. He's in the back. He's looking for Carmella. And he's like, I was hoping that you could come uh, be at ringside with me. Well, no, first he finds... 
Maurice. Oh, and he sees oh, her see, from behind and thinks funny, it's Carmella. Because I didn't know about that. Yeah. Part, yeah. So he like turns her around and he starts yelling at her. And then all of a sudden the Miz comes up and goes, what, what are you doing to my wife? And he's like, you're married to Carmella? <laughs> <laughs> and then the Miz, you know, insults him. Well, first Maurice insults Carmella, calling her the Staten Island okay. trash this or whatever. Is all making she, sense. Then. Yeah. And then the Miz said, you haven't been relevant in since we tagged and he said seven years ago but it was five years ago i think somebody Some, said yeah, whatever. regardless whatever but yes yeah, so all of a sudden it was made that the miz was gonna fight truth but we didn't know that until he said something to Car- carmel oh, when he actually okay. found her okay it's so funny and then he when he does find carmela he asks for her to join her mm-hmm. because maurice was being mean and told her all that. Well, <laughs> well, he says you can join me at ringside to face the real Carmella. No, the no, other Carmella. The other Carmella. And then She's Ty like, said, "That was Maurice." And he's like, "No, my cousin, my cousin's Maurice." And it was... <laughs> he's from Detroit. Yeah, exactly. And then the whole back and forth, and Ty's like, "He's or Truth was like, this is a whole learning experience for you." And he's like, what are you talking about? It's like this is how I get into the main event of SmackDown. He puts on the shades and walks away. <laughs> He actually said that. It was oh my so god! Good. Like, it's they make segments like this, and it's like this is brilliant. And then you get shit the other time, and it's like, see, here's the thing: how much you want to bet that that was an ad lib line? Oh yeah, probably. So that ninety nine percent of the stuff that we think is great is not made by the writers. No, probably it's not. One million percent no, the yeah, performers. Absolutely. It's like Braun with Get These Hands. Oh, yeah. Because it was like a shoot interview. He said he's never said those words yeah, in his right, life. right, right. He just, it came out mm-hmm. and... And it just caught fire. Yep. And that's, that's it. So, like, when you have stuff like The Big Dog and Boss Time and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Like, maybe a one-off, it worked, and then they just kept hammering right. it at home, mm-hmm. and now we can't stand hearing it. Right. So. But, I mean, you know... The main story throughout the whole night is that The Miz called out Daniel Bryan and Bree before the yeah. show started, and then Daniel Bryan and Bree came out and called them out. They weren't there, so then Daniel Bryan and Bree left the arena to get them, and then The Miz and Maurice came back to the arena, and this led to Miz vs. R-Truth, and then Bree and Daniel Bryan came out, and that was... There was a lot of... Uh... A lot of miscommunication. Yeah. Oh, this person's not here. Mm-hmm. Now this person's not here. And... Yeah. yeah. Although, the uh, for whatever reason, when the Miz and Maurice were talking at the restaurant, mm-hmm. it was kind of funny, their, their little interaction. Because uh, they started speaking in Italian, mm-hmm. and they called uh, Daniel Bryan Daniel Bella. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I that. thought yes. that was pretty funny. Yes. Um, so it was good. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, now we know what Asuka is doing. She's yeah. probably going to tag with Naomi yeah, we against knew that the uh, Iconics. It was just a matter of time. Mm-hmm. That another pre-show match. There you go. So we got two. Yeah. Do they usually have two on the short pre-shows or one? They could they could fit usually two. Usually two. They could fit two, especially if this is one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and uh, Becky and Charlotte was made official for Hell in a Cell, but not yes. in Hell in a Cell. Yeah, which, which is kind of what we assumed was going to well, happen. Well, yeah, but I, I'm surprised they're not doing at least a woman's match in Hell in a Cell. Yeah, because, yeah we talked about this last week, yeah, right? Yeah. We knew it wasn't going to be Ronda and... Bliss. No. So there's going to be two for sure, right? Right. It's Randy and Jeff and Braun and Roman. Yeah, so there's probably going to be... Th- there's usually... Every, yeah, usually... There's been consistently three. But it, it would only make sense for... This, this would be the Becky. one. Absolutely. Um, because, I mean, I think Becky posted on Twitter or something like that, that, you know, you can't escape during the cage or whatever it was. Well, uh, never mind. But alluding to them having yeah, yeah, a Hell in a Cell match, because that seemed like what she wanted oh yeah and i'm sure charlotte wants it too yeah she was and already it would make one, sense so. yes and uh just hopefully becky doesn't almost get crushed like sasha almost did oh yeah so we didn't talk about uh the missed suicide dives on raw with from Bree. Bree. Well, yeah we just glossed over it saying that but, they're just not good um who almost killed themselves somebody on smackdown almost did too i forget who it was i don't know was it andrade no 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 was it one of the Usos? Mm-mm. I'm trying to think what it was from. There's only, what, three matches? Yeah, I was going to say, four? there's really not a whole lot of options here. 
I don't know. But I know it seems like WWE that, because, I mean, the suicide dive is done all over the place, mm-hmm. but it seems like here they have the so many instances it. where it looks like somebody's going to kill themselves. Mm-hmm. Well, Big E landed on his head one time. Mm-hmm. Sasha, Sasha getting... yeah, always looks like she's... Maybe it was Daniel Bryan. I think it was Daniel it was Bryan when he went him. through the ropes. Yes, because his feet hit the top oh, rope, he got I stuck. Think. Yeah. Oh, when, uh, I think it was Eric Young, when he got tossed out of the ring during the tag match, he, like, slammed his head on the... Mm-hmm. That's possible. It was him or one of the Usos. Yeah. But it was like right before the finish yeah. of the match. So But you gotta think fatigue probably settles in on Oh yeah. Things like this. It makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying like that that was an mm. instance of right. one of those bad things. Yeah. But. but then it was just weird to see Bree screw up on two of them when we've seen her able to do well, it in the past. Because it's funny because that first one she like didn't even go through like Nope, she stopped. Yeah. But I don't think she was supposed to go Mm-mm. through anyway. But she made a dead stop, and then I think it was tumbled through the ropes. I think it was, I think it was Ruby. No, it was Sarah. On oh, the was that? Yeah. Okay. And she like swings, clearly misses, mm-hmm. and then Bree kind of like right. falls backwards. It was well, I mean, it was yeah, a mess. Yeah. I mean, at least they attempted to try and clean it up. Yeah, it didn't work. And then the other but... one, she just fell short, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But, all right, so what are we, week and a half away from Hell in a Cell? Yeah, it's the... What is your excitement level for Hell in a Cell? Um, I think it'll be a good show. I don't I don't think it's uh, going to be like a takeover, that's oh, for sure. absolutely not. But I, I, th- <laughs> I think we're... I think... We're going to get a good match with Carmella, mm-hmm. not Carmella, um, Charlotte and Becky. Um, Alexa and Ronda should be all right. Um, Roman I and Braun. Guess. I but, mean, that's not going to be clean. Yeah, whatever. Doesn't matter. Hell in a cella. Um, Braun and Roman should be good. At, at, or at oh, the yeah, very no, least intriguing. All their matches have so, always been solid. Wow. Yeah, you saw the graphic for it wow it's uh it's something else why is it like that though i don't know that's because roman is definitely not the devil although they both have horns so i guess that makes sense yeah it's been seven matches announced oh uh, jeff hardy versus randy orton uh, jeff's gonna die and and everybody knows he's gonna do something stupid yeah. he's gonna find his way onto, onto the top mm-hmm. and then and then the tag match will be great yep because the new day are just on top of their game during uh title matches and then you're probably gonna see the it's the the raw tag team championship it's gotta be them versus dean and seth yeah so but that'll be good yeah i know but again like i said it just you're not you know, gonna have the ic title well, or the u.s title on the pay-per-view it's true because nakamura hasn't done anything mm-hmm. since SummerSlam. but yeah and then uh i mean the super show is gonna happen that's about it yeah. And that's October's pay per view, right? Technically, with Evolution being. Yeah. Kind I of guess its own because side. Super Show is a. Even though it's not being classified as a pay per view, no. while Evolution is. Right. Um, Super Show is the co branded one. Mm-hmm. So. And I don't think they're um, going to televise the show in Saudi Arabia in November. Oh, they're not? I don't think so. I'm I surprised. Mean, I think there's a lot of backlash. I guess, maybe. I don't know. I guess it's a lot easier to I mean, justify they, a house show. Well, they're probably making more money that way. Yeah, well, because they, they don't money. need to bring the production right, crew. Right, Probably cost a lot less because mm-hmm. they didn't need to bring all the, the um, like, the Titantron stuff and everything. Yeah. Did you see their travel schedule recently? They were in, like, China and Canada. Yeah, I knew they were in China. And they were all over the place. I was like, jeez. And then they're going to be in Australia in a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. It's rough Crazy. life. Rough crazy life. but so. i mean that, that's that's pretty much it right uh i think we covered everything yeah so uh yeah that was episode 11 of our podcast yes if you liked what you saw here please like share and subscribe bye bye